everyone, and welcome to Spacing Out. I'm Jason McClellan. And I'm Maureen Ellsbury. Thanks for joining us. The 40th anniversary of the Pascagoula UFO and extraterrestrial encounter just recently passed. Only one of the two witnesses is still alive today, and he recently spoke about the event in a rare interview with the Associated Press. We'll talk more about that later, but first, let's talk about some of the other stories that have made headlines recently. A man from the town of Keswick in Cumbria, England, recently notified a local newspaper about a strange object he spotted in the sky in late September in hopes of finding other witnesses. The witness, Richard Smith, says the object was a sphere with lights around the perimeter that were pulsating and changing color. He told the News and Star he thought it might be a satellite, helicopter, or airplane. However, the longer he watched it, the more strange he thought it was. Smith quickly trained his telescope on the object, and what he saw confirmed to him that the object was something unusual. He used his iPhone to record the object through the telescope for a little less than a minute. The object in the video doesn't look like a simple point of light, but rather it looks like a sphere surrounded by flashing multicolored lights. The News & Star interviewed local UFO expert Pat Reagan, who said that if the video is a fake, it's well done. He continued, it is rather difficult to say more at this stage because we cannot ascertain the actual size of the entity, for there is no other object in the video to base its dimensions upon, such as a tree, a building, or the moon, etc. One theory is that the object is simply a dim star out of focus, but for now the object remains unidentified. A man claims he accidentally photographed a UFO while taking landscape photos in the West Yorkshire town of Shipley in England on Sunday, October 6th. He explained to the Telegraph in Argus, I had a friend coming to visit from London and I wanted to show him the beautiful views. He stopped his car at a bus stop to take the landscape photos on his cell phone and that's apparently when he snapped the photo that captured the UFO. As is the case with many similar situations, the photographer says he did not see the UFO when he took the photo, but instead he discovered it when he was back home reviewing his photos. He told the Telegraph and Argus that after discovering the UFO in his photo, he immediately thought that it looked like some sort of spaceship. He continued, I think it must have come from space because it looks so very strange. He also speculates that the object must have been flying very quickly because he didn't see anything in the sky when he took the photo. Although he is convinced he photographed a spaceship, not everyone agrees with his conclusion. Some believe the object in the photo is simply something on the car's windshield, like bird droppings or even a chip in the glass. Another theory is that because of the similar shape, the UFO could simply be the tax disc holder, the object attached to the lower left corner of the windshield, reflecting off the lens of the camera. Yet others believe the UFO shows signs of digital manipulation, implying the photographer added the UFO to the photo. The photographer seemingly took multiple photos of the same landscape. So viewing these other photos would be an easy way to either substantiate or refute the theories that the UFO is simply a reflection or something on the windshield. But this one photo is all that has been released. Multiple witnesses saw a UFO hovering over the village of Whiteshill in Gloucestershire, England on the night of Friday, October 4th. Sam Villeneuve saw the UFO at approximately 9 p.m. and was able to photograph this strange object. He posted the following message and photo to his Twitter account, bringing it to the attention of the Stroud News and Journal. A green circle in the sky by Whitesell tonight was just floating. Hashtag UFO. A nearby motorist also observed the unidentified aerial object. He described to the Stroud News and Journal, I spotted a ring of light in the sky. It was like a blue or green ball and it was just sat above the tree line at about 1 a.m. in the morning. I pulled over in the bus stop near Edge to get some pictures. The object then simply disappeared after a few minutes. He went on to explain, I don't believe in UFOs personally, but it was definitely odd. It wasn't hovering like a helicopter would. It was really strange. A Russian military space official admitted on Wednesday, October 2nd, that his country's space troops are ill-equipped to defend against an extraterrestrial attack. According to Russia Today, what was formerly known as the Russian Space Forces is now the Aerospace Defense Forces. This current incarnation of Russia's space troops was created in 2011 through the integration of several military branches responsible for anti-missile defense, strategic anti-aircraft warfare, and control of outer space. This new branch of the armed forces of the Russian Federation is principally responsible for air and space defense, and one of its specific tasks is monitoring space objects and identification of potential threats to the Russian Federation in space and from space, prevention of attacks as needed. 
But these space troops are apparently not ready if the prevention of an attack from extraterrestrial forces is needed. Well, speaking at a media conference at the Titov Main Test and Space Systems Control Center near Moscow, a journalist asked an aide to the head of the center about defending against an extraterrestrial invasion. The aide responded, So far we are not capable of that. We are unfortunately not ready to fight extraterrestrial civilizations. He explained, Our center was not tasked with it. There are too many problems on Earth and near it. Russia Today points out that while the space troops may not have the capability to fight aliens just yet, they do have extremely effective and high-tech resources to help them deal with terrestrial issues and threats. Charles Hickson and Calvin Parker Jr. claimed that on October 11, 1973, they encountered a UFO with strange creatures that took them aboard and examined them. Now, 40 years later, Parker Jr. still stands by his story. October 11th marked the 40th anniversary of one of the most famous abduction cases. In 1973, Charles Hickson and Calvin Parker were fishing in Pascagoula, Mississippi when they say they saw a craft coming from the river, landing close to them, and some entities come out. What's interesting is that these creatures were different than what is typically described. They had these long heads with spikes coming out of them and claw-like hands. They were then taken onto the craft where they were examined by what they said was a mechanical eye. They were then placed back on the shore. Uh, they called the police. The police interviewed them, and the police thought that they had a pretty solid case. They even tried to trick them up by putting a microphone in the room with the two gentlemen and then leaving the room. But when they left the room, instead of hearing these guys talk about hoaxing the police, they talked about how fearful the situation was, what they were going to do next, and they seemed genuinely afraid. What's interesting about this is that the Associated Press was actually able to interview Calvin Parker recently. He has really shied away from the limelight, whereas Charles Hickson, for many years, did UFO conferences and did any interview about the situation um, that people asked him to do. He unfortunately passed away a couple years ago, but Calvin Parker is still alive, and he says to this day that it was a real event, that it scared the heck out of him, and uh, that he doesn't want to talk to the press about it, but he did want to come out just to see if others had had similar sort of experiences. So uh, another great case, and now the media is picking up this story all over the world. I think it's so great when well-known historical cases like this sort of are, are reinvigorated by interviews like this, and they generate lots of headlines and get people talking and remembering the cases. You know, it's really interesting that this case is brought up again. It was a few years ago when Charles Hickson, the other member, actually passed away. And this is actually a fascinating case, and they described very similar things to re when they reported it after the abduction and also very terrifying creatures. I'm still haunted by the drawings that they did. Yeah, the little claw hands, and yeah, pretty freaky. But I love historical cases like this, that the witnesses, the people involved, their story doesn't change mm -hmm. after decades. It years. reminds me of Travis Walton. You know, there, there are similar cases where year after year, the witnesses, they stick to their stories. It seems very credible, and it's a very fascinating case. Well, some of the most amazing cases all happened in the 70s, and these were all mass, multiple witness abduction cases. And, right. and these are the people that are sticking to their stories and just are coming off very well. So yeah, it's, it's a really fascinating case, and I'm glad he's talking about it again. So glad to see it. It is making a lot of headlines, and there have been a lot of uh, photo and video UFO cases making headlines recently mm -hmm. with some interesting video. And I think the, the Cumbria, England uh, video is, is pretty fascinating you know, one of the more fascinating ones we've seen recently. Well, yeah, and I, I think that there are potentials that it's a very normal celestial sure. object, but right now it is unidentified and it is quite interesting. Another possibility I've seen thrown out there is that it could be, I mean, we have no reference point. You can't really see anything except this round thing with all sorts of flashing lights. Could be that it's behind trees mm -hmm. and it could be like a, Forest Service or police car or something with, with the siren going. And that's why you see the multicolored flashing lights through the shadow of the trees. And we've seen so. reports of Forest Service lights uh, being responsible for UFO sightings just in the last right. two years. So it's just a possibility. It could be anything, but without any, any reference points or anything, we can't determine much. But it is a fascinating video. Well, and again, he came forward because he wanted more witnesses to, if anyone else saw it. Well, hopefully 
somebody comes forward. Yeah. And then another story that I found interesting that did make a lot of uh, headlines was the story about the, the Russian space troops saying that you know, they're ill-equipped to defend against extraterrestrials. And that's one of those stories, you know, kind of like the declassification of Area 51 story, where you just kind of go, duh. Yeah. You know, obviously we're not uh, Russia, probably anybody else. You know, I, I think maybe some egotistical governments, perhaps the United States, would say, oh, of course, we're ready to defend against aliens. But We have no course. idea what that sort of invasion could mean right. or what would happen or what sort of weapon. Right. Whatever tree. civilization is yeah. coming here, the technology they have, we don't know. So, so. May maybe Russia is prepared. Who knows? It depends on <laughs> what sort of backing That's right. that these extraterrestrials have. Right. That's what so they awful. know. It's disinformation, Maureen. Disinformation. <laughs> well, that is all for this episode of Spacing Out. Remember, you can visit OpenMinds.tv for all the latest news. And if you're a podcast listener, go to OpenMinds.tv slash radio and check out Open Minds UFO Radio. Make sure to click on the like button if you enjoyed today's show. And remember to subscribe to our channel so you know when we post new content. Thanks again for joining us today. I'm Maureen Ellsbury. And I'm Jason McClellan. We will see you in the future. If you have a UFO sighting or something you would like to report to Open Minds, you can go to our website at openminds.tv and click the contact button to send us your request. Or you can email us at contact at openminds.tv. You can also call us at 1-877-UFO-0110. That's 1-877-836-0110.